All right, chaps, I got a quick video for you today. So printers are getting easier to use. Uh, slicers are becoming more optimized. Filament and resin is less finicky, yet we're not quite at the one-click print just yet. There are a lot of obstacles in the way, obviously, but aside from technical issues and things like bad settings or bad leveling or maintenance cause issues, perhaps, there is one thing standing in the way, especially for beginners, and that is easy customization. These are 3D printers. They were designed specifically for easy customization of products and prototypes. And yet most of us, like the overwhelming majority, don't print things that we designed ourselves. Uh, instead, we get them from someone else and we hope that they're exactly what we want, which in a lot of cases, they're not. So you got to adjust them, which means you've got to learn CAD. Sometimes that can be difficult. Recently, bigger companies have been creating their own model hosting sites, and they've integrated this into their slicers so that you can open up the slicer and you can just import the 3MF or the G code or whatever, and it's there ready for you. The settings are perfect, hopefully, and you can just print it and that's it. Now this works really well, especially for beginners, uh, but you just might not find exactly what you need, obviously. We've all heard about AI advances in the last couple of years. You would have to be pretty dull not to know about this. And I really like AI image generation. I use Midjourney quite frequently, actually. Just fill in a prompt, wait a minute, and boom, you have your image. And it can create fantastically complicated images, although sometimes it's not that accurate. At least they got the hat right. By the way, this is great for HueForge, so consider that. So you might be forgiven for thinking that AI 3D model generation is a breeze, given that Midjourney can do this so well with such complicated detail and generate an image in under a minute. Why not do it like 200 times of the same subject, but from differing angles, and then use that as a data set, import it into software like Photogrammetry software, and there you go, you'll have your 3D model. Well. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. And generative AI is sort of in, in its infancy. Uh, and it can make big mistakes. Hilarious mistakes. Still, there are free-ish online services uh, that create 3D models from prompts just like Midjourney. Let's see how they do. So just so you guys know, I am only trying uh, services that are not hidden behind a paywall, ones that have a free trial. Some of these are free, others are free-ish. They give you a trial and then you have to pay after. Um, I'm also only trying services that are that have prompts from text. So there are services that you can get that have prompts that are image-based. Uh, or 3D model based, which, why? But yeah, so just, just text based for this one. All right, first is a Meshi. Now I have actually heard of these guys before. I saw a video about this and it was quite positive. So let's see what they got. Okay, so I'm being very simple with my prompt. I'm just gonna say a little boat. That's it, nothing, nothing fancy. Let's just see what it can do. Okay, so it generated a few different versions. Let's take a look. I mean, that's not bad, I guess. Like, it is the general shape of a boat. The color is sort of wild, um, but it's kind of solid. And the, the, the inner part that's supposed to be hollow, obviously, is just a big lump of different colors. That's more realistic, I think. That's a little better, but still, it's only just doing the, the hull and everything else inside is clumpiness. Okay, next up, we're doing a little fox. And it is the general shape of a fox, yes. Again, they, they do get a bit wild with the colors. Um, hmm, interesting. But what you can do with these generated models is improve them. They You can refine them. And I did put in a low poly fox as my prompt. And this is what it creates when you refine it properly, which is okay in terms of low poly, I suppose. Okay, next up is a spiral vase. And this came out okay, I think, actually. Like, not bad. It's got a low polygon can. For this one, it's 43,000, which is pretty low. 
And after refining it, you do get this, which, yeah, it does define it more and it does improve the colors and it does add some, some texture to it, which is nice. I, mean, I guess you could use this to print with, but yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> Okay, lastly, I decided to do a dragon skull because everyone everyone loves dragon skulls. And this is the refined version and it's 9,000 faces. Again, very low. And as you can see, I've turned off the texture, the color, and that is what you're left with. This is just the geometry. It's very bare without the color. Okay, next up is Sloyd, which I've never heard of before. And I asked it to create an axe and it did, which was very simple. Yeah, it's just it's just an axe. And then just like last time with Meshi, I asked it to create a spiral vase and it defaulted to what it calls flower urns, which is kind of strange. Um, you can change things a little bit. There is a level of detail slider, uh, which actually doesn't do that much. Yeah, I found this to be kind of odd that it called it flower urns. So after I decided to ask it to create a little boat, just like last time. And it created a raft, like a Polynesian raft. So I don't actually think that this is generative. I think they're actually just spawning models from a list of sources. I don't know how to do this, but it, it doesn't seem like it's creating what I wanted to create. It just seems like it's creating something that is already in their stockpile of models. Next up is Alpha 3D, and we're gonna do a really cute owl to start off with. Um, hmm. Well, that's terrifying. Okay, something else. Um, Lee, we shall try an angry skull. Yeah, again, this is very, very low poly. It's just a kind of a vague likeness of a skull. It's It doesn't really give you that much. Okay, next up is Genie. And I created a spiral vase, and that's what it gives you. Again, heavy on the color to impart a sense of depth and 3D-ishness. Okay, let's do an angry skull like we did last time. And this is what we get, which is, which is pretty good. This is an angry skull with battle damage and demon horns. And that, that's not that bad, actually. And actually, I, you can refine this, and this is the refined version. It's not bad, I guess. Then I asked it to create a bust of a man. He's got some facial issues. They all have facial issues. Okay, last up is Masterpiece X. So I've never used this one before. It's a little more varied in its prompt options. You can choose the style as well to be more realistic, more creative. Okay, here's our cute little owl. It's owl shaped. I mean, it's okay, I guess, but just like the others, we had some issues with how detailed the polygon count is. And if I import this into Blender, you can actually see how low detail it is. Uh, lastly, we're gonna create some bananas. And this is what we got. We got a series of bananas. And as you can see, some are incredibly low poly, but some are a little more detailed. But yeah, it's, it's so low quality. Yeah, there's only 21,000 triangles on all of these. All right, so for a step towards a one-click print, these are all pretty disappointing. Um, the issue is that none of these are optimized for 3D printing. Uh, they all create models that have a relatively low resolution geometry. I think the most that we had was 40,000 polygons. Um, that's that's tiny. Uh, it's, it's really, really small. Like Normally, we deal with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of polygons and models that we download from the internet. Um, but they all also relied on color and texture to impart a sense of depth and 3D-ishness. Uh, that's pretty useless for a 3D printer. These would make okay static assets for, for game design. Maybe. I would say that the only use you can make of these is sort of like a starter model for 3D sculpting. It, it might save you some time, uh, but there's there's no way you can just use them for 3D printing and, and and they're nice. It's not gonna work like that. But if I was to take one of these models, let's say the, the banana one, and we get a banana skin texture and displace the geometry from that texture, uh, a lick of paint and here we are. And that's not that bad actually. I guess some of these can be useful if you have some CAD knowledge, which sort of defeats the purpose of this whole endeavor. 
But of course, none of the AI tools we tried here are what I was looking for. There is no customization here. There is just an algorithm that herds out electric sheep, which vaguely conform to a prompt. Given time, this will improve, I hope. But right now, if you want customization, the best thing that you can hope for is going to those generators that are designed specifically for 3D printing. So Maker World has Make My Vase. There is a Voronoi tool you can use. You can Voronoi whatever you want. There is also a, a Lithophane Maker. This is itslitho.com. These are limited in terms of creativity, yes, but at least you can specify what you want for these kinds of objects. We're at the beginning of things now. AI image generation didn't really exist a couple of years ago. Um, so in a couple of years, maybe we will have something cool to use. So be patient. Try to be patient. No, don't be patient. Hassle everyone you know who's involved in this business. And maybe someday soon, we will have something cool to use. Because whoever does this, if it's done well, it'll be worth the while. See you guys next time. Later.